Welcome to the Big Water Podcast. Um, we're doing things a little different in season two. Producer dude, he's he's jumping in. He's trying to keep us in line. And <clears throat> producer dude, we have a literal legend. Like the term legend is thrown around crazy. In most cases, it's like, no, dude, you've been doing this three or four years. You're not that big of a deal. Um, this guy would be for the young kids, like LeBron meets Michael Jordan. Um, first guy, producer dude, I mean, to have a, literally a rep group. Um, I mean, design his own, I mean, he's got his boats, water intakes, lures. When I was a young kid, there was cardboard cutouts of him before we have like what we have now. He was kind of the first guy to really make a fish, a living fishing to my knowledge. Um, and some of the names that, you know, he started with in the day that, you know, he just thinks they're like his neighbor, right? Or like the Al Linders, you know, we've had Troy on, on the podcast, but just legendary people. So, um, I don't know really what to say other than that. yeah. I mean, I know you've you hold him in such high regard. I know in working with you over ten years that we've been working together, I, I feel like he comes up like almost every time we're out doing anything or anytime I read anything about walleye fishing. Or, you know, I'm not a I'm not a fisherman. I've been out with you enough to understand. You know, he's he's the Dale Earnhardt, the Michael Jordan. You he know, is. he he's that guy. I mean. His name is Mr. Walleye, for, right? right? It literally, I mean, trademarked. literally, Mr. Walleye. So, um, so I'm looking forward to to hearing his story, just because I know how much he means to you. Yeah, and I think that you know, hopefully, he's going to tell us some old stories and stuff like that with Gary. I mean, he could tell a million of them, um, but realistic i think nowadays the reason i do that if you look on my website or anything else i give credit to gary you always do yeah i think that there's so many guys nowadays forget just the fishing industry that are like hey look at me hey look i did this i did that and it's like dude you you kind of were mentored you learned like somebody taught you that like that's not necessarily your deal you know what i mean um you you get into like disciplines like karate and stuff like that you know people always say hey this is this is your your guy and in fishing they don't do that everybody's kind of beating on their own chest so i definitely like to give props back to him because and the funny thing is, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, in the podcast, I'm going to try to bring it up, is I learned so much about life. Because when I started fishing with Gary, I literally wasn't even old enough to drive. So I learned a lot about life. I learned a lot about the fishing business by seeing him maybe make right. some bad deals, some good deals. And I mean, he's the reason you're able to do what you do now, right? Truly. I mean, like even yeah. these internet kids or these YouTubers yeah. or whatever, they don't know it. But Gary Roach, and, and, and I know we're going to get him to go there. He went to these companies and said, hey, you know, you need somebody to push this. And it sounds crazy. But again, 40, 50 years ago or, well, heck no, 60 years ago, 60 years ago, when he started doing this, there was nobody doing it. Nobody was pushing this stuff. So he opened an avenue absolutely for me, but also for guys like Kevin Van Dam and other guys like that. I mean, when he literally started at the roots, you know, when he got out of the water with guys like the Linders and before, and Fisherman was even around, um, they worked with Lindy Tackle. And we'll talk about that when, when Al Linder, a lot of people don't know, he started that. Mm-hmm. So um, crazy deal. But before we get to that, how do people find big water fishing? You know, bigwaterfishing.com, of course, on the web. I mean, if you Google us, you will find us just about everywhere. On Instagram, we're Big Water Fishing. On YouTube, we're Big Water Fishing. Facebook, I'm pretty sure if you Google us, I mean, we're, we're kind of putting a push on this. We're doing videos. We've right. got a lot of stuff out there. We've got, you know, you look on places online. Like I said, if you Google just me or Ross Robertson, you'll find on Meat Eater, Outdoor Life, Field and Stream, In Fisherman. I do a monthly column with, with both Meat Eater and In Fisherman. So, Look for our content, Get subscribe to our newsletter. That's one of the best ways to get this without getting spammed and junked up. And that's how you're gonna find out, even if it's like a guide trip or catching a fish or doing whatever you wanna do, bigwaterfishing.com. Yeah, and remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, we've got audio episodes on all the major podcast networks. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can watch the video of all the episodes uh, as well. So So yes, I run a guide service. Yes, I've got a bunch of guys. If you want to go fishing, you know, we've got a whole fleet of guys that do that in boats. But realistically, big water fishing moving forward, we're doing a lot of media stuff. I've been doing it forever, but thanks to producer dude and such, I mean, we're doing a lot of other new stuff, right? And there's some projects even coming that maybe we won't tell them quite yet, but um, go on bigwaterfishing.com. You can find a lot of that stuff kind of lumped up in one spot. All right. Well, let's, uh, I'm excited to learn about, uh, Mr. Walleye. And you'll find out why I call him Papa. So Gary Roach, you know, I haven't called you Gary in a very long time because me and Todd Frank and a bunch of the boys, we call you Papa. Yeah, that's because I'm your elder. I appreciate that. You know. <laughs> well, that that probably is because uh, you're also a kind of our mentor. You've been a mentor to me and a bunch of guys like Todd, too, for sure. But how about 
the name Rotten. Like that goes back. I remember the line you used to say, and I know you probably don't even like talking about this, but uh, well, actually, fishing's the game, and Rotten's the name. Well, no, no, How, actually, actually it, the fame, the fame, the lenders, the black hatters, we call them, the lender black hatters, they were pretty bad, so, <laughs> you know, only on Friday nights, otherwise, Saturday nights and Sundays, we were good guys, so, so yeah, <laughs> I don't good think, old days, yeah, I don't think a lot of people nowadays, it seems like, you know, forget just fishing, people, they kind of forget history a little bit, right, and, you know, some of the names that we accept in fishing, you guys were a small little kind of cult-like following there with, you know, tell me about some of the early days, whether it's, you know, like the Niswa things or back to the Al days. But, I mean, even before that, I just think about the stories that I know you've told me when we traveled together for a number of years there and I was learning the ropes from you about in the early days, you know, I just remember you renting, wasn't it renting a motor and you had a car top boat or something guiding? When I started doing this, well. Uh... Actually, when I when I got out of school, I was in the woods in a logger, you know. And then I went spent my four years in the Navy, and then came home, married Beverly out there, of course, in 1959, and uh, came back and I did everything you could imagine to to get to get work, you know, in those days. So, but we had to, I worked in a gas station. Uh, we played music in a band. You know, had a had a good band, a country western band. And then I got into the, the business of mechanics and stuff, and I had my own gas station. And and every once in a while, I I'd, I'd had, look out on the outside, and I oh man, this is a good day. This would be a beautiful day on Pelican Lake. I know the wallies are on the banks, they're on the shore. <clears throat> so I tell my guy that I say, hey, I got to make a service call. So I'd go out and the only last crew that had some wooden boats. I just roll the edge of the drop off and go to Morningside Beach and catch a few walleyes and come back and. You know, and that's how I still love the fish because I was born and raised on Mission Lake. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> Crappie Lake and Northern Pike Lake and Sunfish Lake, anyway. So on a few walleyes. <clears throat> well, my brother in law says, I said, Jesus, they're catching some fish up here by on the Gull Lake and stuff like that. And I said, You guys named Linders. And uh, Butch Lavoy, was, which was Beverly's brother, she said, Heck, you can catch this fish like those guys again. So I went up to um, Marv Kepps. And he gave me a green box, didn't have a boat, and said, uh, here, give her a try. So uh, I used to rent a boat for $3 a day. I had a seven-and-a-half horse Maroon Johnson, an older one. And hopefully I had a big enough guy to carry the motor down the hill and up, and then put it on the back of the boat, and that's how I started guiding. <clears throat> and I had a lake that was, um, you, you'd have loved this lake. It was just full of eyes, and, and there was no landing on it at all. And I would get my walleyes in yeah, 45 minutes. I get my, my limits for the guys. I'd drop, I'd, I'd drop them off at the bait shop, and I said, you can't tell anybody about anything about where this lake is. <coughs> so, and they all kept it quiet. I know I'd get my that's 15 amazing. 18 walleyes. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So that's how I started. I didn't have a boat, and then finally I, I got enough money, and I bought me that one that you know, we call it a Teddy Roosevelt boat because we call it a rough ride, rough ride in front of a gun, but and a wet one. It was a tri hull that everybody had that in those days. You know, here and, and all the guides, uh, that's what guys, most of them did, except for Harry Van Dorn, the old guy. He always had a tri hull. I mean, a, a, a V hull. <clears throat> so anyway, we got kitchen fish, uh, learning how to, you might say, the different lakes. But the whole secret was the locator, and I took Carl Lawrence out fishing, and one time, and him and his and his partner, and he explained a lot about this, the electronics and stuff like that. I mean, that was a green box. If you can remember, you've seen pictures of them, or you probably got one stashed away somewhere. You know, I do have one yeah. from my dad because my dad, if he was still alive, he'd be about just a couple years older than you, I think. But uh, for people that are listening and don't know. The green box was literally this like fold up flasher that Lawrence came out with. And then, I mean, yep. what year was that? Do you know? Oh, that was in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. The late 60s. Yeah. And then uh, Marv Kemp sold a, actually a semi load of green boxes when they first came into, into this area. Yeah, a semi load. And there was actually a red box before that, a few, but then they updated it to uh, 60 foot from a 100 foot screen. And it didn't have a suppressor on it because if you if you run your outboard a little bit too fast, it would just screw up the whole locator. It didn't have a suppressor on it. 
But they got that fixed, and then they put a 60-foot screen on it, and then, well, then, I, and as you know, then things really started popping for the electronics. So, and we have this, and I think at Linder's, those guys, I think they did a, a book on, uh, on, on walleye fishing, Secrets of Walleye or something like that, many, many years ago. And, uh, and then Al put me to work, and you know, I was doing some pretty, pretty good catching fish and stuff like that. And then I started fishing a few tournaments, and then Al put me to work on the road. So I worked with, with those guys for about 17 years and then went on to another company called well, Northland Tackler. And to, to kind of stop for a second, because people back home, you know, that maybe aren't uh, following along completely is, so when you say Al, we're meaning Al Linder and Ron Linder, but it was, this was before in Fisherman or because he, that was oh, yeah. when they owned Lindy oh. Tackle, right? Yeah. Because they started yeah, Lindy Tackle. Before. Okay. Yeah. So that was actually Nick Adams, Al and Ron started it. And they put me on as one of their first promotional guys as, to go on the road with those guys. And then they acquired Little Joe Tackle, which was down in Isle of Minnesota, which made products, you know, spinners and stuff. And they did a lot of stuff. And then they, they just started putting the Lindy rig together. And oh, that was a different kind of a sinker. We always used a slip, uh, not a slip sinker, but a barrel sinker. That's what we used in the old days before this came about, but the idea was the promotion is what we did, see. We get on the old soapbox and at the shows, Chicago shows and and we were Rochester all I mean all over the country. Kansas City, Missouri, Saint Louis and stuff. That's that's what I did with those guys. Stand on the soapbox and tell them this is what and they only had three products and they had a dingo jig, they had a plastic worm and they had a rig. You want to talk about a little history. I'm wearing a hat that you gave me about twenty five years ago from Northland Tackle oh, wow. and things all faded out. And ironically, full circle, I'm now working with Northland Tackle and helping them with the Great Lakes oh. launch of the new crankbaits and stuff. So it's just funny how things come full circle, huh? Isn't that great, huh? Isn't that something? Yeah. All the fun we used to have out there, you know, well, I remember on the on the lake out there, those people was, one, one lure was a weight forward spinner, remember? Oh yeah. But yeah, getting back to it, I I can remember the Foffridges telling me the story that you guys went out, I mean, I don't know when this was, 60s, 70s, whatever it was, and you you finished the story, but basically you you drove across the reefs and you're like, why aren't we jigging this? And they're like, what do you mean? Because nobody here did a jigging minnow deal, like nobody. And I think it was Fuzzy Girls back then that you were doing. Yeah, yeah, Jim Foffish took me down, well, Senior, Jim Senior took me down to the river where those, all these walleye spawn, and the guys were casting out and jerking, and then actually snagging lots of fish, and I said, Jim, I said, where are all these walleyes coming from? He said, oh, the lake, he said, he said, I said, he said, oh, there's some fish on the reefs out here. I said, well, gee, anybody got a boat in? I think, I think Bob, Bob Chase had a boat in. So let's go out there and, and I said can we stop at the bait shop and get some minnows and they, they say well what for and I said well does anybody use uh, minnows on their jigs out here well not really so we went out there and in one pass we caught 52 walleyes and uh, well then two saint two saint reef remember the old two saint is where we started you know of course you lose about 10 jigs because there's so many rocks and there but there was millions of walleyes you cook catch one fish be five following it up to the boat, you know, chasing chasing the other wally because they were in the spawning mode then, I guess you would say. But then after that, it was like, man, <clears throat> the guy from Toledo, the, the, what's his name, uh, old John Gillespie? Yeah, John Gillespie. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, did yeah. the first. He did the first show on the reefs out there. And then it was just like, wow, thousand boat came out there. I mean, it was unbelievable on the reefs and all up and down there. So that you know, kind of, we started that and it, with, with just the jigs. And then, of course, the, the, the spinners, you know, all the spinners, you know. And, you know, Jerry Meyer, remember old beat pole? Yeah. I talked to him, though, not too long ago, and he's still going. And yeah. uh, he put on a he put on a spinner and dropped it to the, with a bottom bouncer to the bottom, and he was always catching the biggest fish, you know. And we won that tournament out there. We won it with him, and we won it with Jim with Jim Fawfish, and then won the first one that the PWT uh, had out there in uh, on Anse Island when we went out there and stayed on the island. I won that first one, so that was. I mean, those fish were like 28, 29 inches average, you know, as you know. How did you meet Jim Fawfish? 
you know, I was driving back from a bath tournament in New York, and our reps that that actually fished that area said, "You guys got to you got to stop in there and, and check out this lake area." And a Bill, a Bill, uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, James Lingo, Wigginton, Bill Wigginton. And Hugh Edwards was the reps for Lindy then, and so they said you got to stop and check out that lake. You know, you know, you got to be man the walleyes, or you can catch a hundred walleyes in no time. So I swung in to Port Clinton, took the back road to Port Clinton, and stopped at the marina and just the one over the bridge. And Jim was guiding out of there. That was before that we went to Floros, which is on the west side by the nuke plant. And then I. Found him. I mean, if he found me or I found him or whatever and talking, he said, "You got to go fishing with me." So that, that's how it started. And uh, man, it was it was just like I mean, from then it was just unbelievable. So and I then we go out there and catch seventy walleye, ten walleye limit then, and seventy walleyes in just two and a half hours. You know, I mean, it was just every cast. You could count to ten, you could catch a walleye. <laughs> I heard you cast out, count to ten, then jerk the jerk the spinner, and then set the hook because there was a walleye on it. I don't know if a lot of younger guys that are in the sport now realize like how many products you've designed. I can remember back even when I was a young guy, you know, you had cardboard cutouts in the tackle stores and you, you know, had your own series of boats with Lund, your own signature series rods. I mean, just about everything. Um, what was the, the, the thing you were most proud of, of designing of all the stuff, whether it's the lures or what, what was the, it was there a thing? Well, I don't know. It, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, I uh, I did stuff, uh, trank baits, some for Lindy's, you know, the shadlings and all. And then it was actually the Young's tackle. It was the bass baits, you know, then in those days. And then I designed a shadling, which is kind of like a, a fat, fat little long, long bait, which was, they changed it and didn't make it run worth a damn. You get one out of ten that would run, but it would catch fish if you could if you could get them to run. And then the musky shab, I did shad, I did that one. And then I went, and I did some stuff for Smithwick, you know, and and I love their lures, you know. They had the right colors for that area out there with the silver, you know, and dirty water orange belly and. And it was a diver had a rattle in it, and I helped North, not Northland, but uh, Rapala. They didn't have a diver in those days, remember? And I helped. I told them that. Told uh, Craig Weber, I said we need a, a diver. That's when I was doing stuff for Rapala too. So we took uh, a copy of the. Uh, they had a, a lure there with a body. Actually, Mark Martin used to use it just for night fishing. It was just a, a real a slow wobble and a. And didn't have a good lip on it, and it didn't dive. But we took that bad body and put a lip on it, and then, man, they took off. I mean, unbelievable. I think one of the things that people don't realize, again, like the stuff that had your name and your face on it, like, you know, I mean, that's one thing. But, like, the high-speed pickup, I can remember seeing where you had PVC pipe coming, um, you know, out of the back of your boat. And, you know, that's probably one of those deals nowadays. I think you, you and jokingly, when me and you just talk driving down the road every now and then, and, you said, yeah, oh, that's when I didn't yeah. know what a patent was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, everybody's fish were dying, remember, in the tournaments. I mean, in the Ranger, it actually had the worst live well of any of them out there then. And and I designed a, the pipe come off the back of the boat was actually a water pickup system. The faster you would go, the more water would come up through that pipe. And I had a valve that would go dump it right into the live well. So as we're running down the lake, as you remember, it would keep those fish. In fact, you couldn't catch them in the live all. They would be so hot on oxygen. <laughs> and then, of course, then London welded a pipe to the bottom of the boat with a scoop on it. And, and they reversed it. Instead of a scoop pulling the water out of, of the of the bill, Jerry, it was actually a scoop to to put water back in to the live well. And that just, I mean, everybody could not figure out how. Those fish were so hot when everybody else was dying, you know. But when you're running, wide open, of course, you had aerator pump and stuff going up. But when you're running, the one the, the pump don't work. So, but the scoop kept the water going in there with bubbles and stuff like that. And the fish were hot, I'm telling you. So they were just this full of life. You couldn't hardly catch them to weigh them in. And we had that for quite a few years. I did that one too for him. And Lanny Orbola was our guy in London too that helped me do all this stuff. So and designed the big boats, the twenty-five inch transoms, and 
Oh, yeah. <clears throat> a lot of stuff we've been doing. You know, all the fishing rods and stuff, as you know. My, all my rod line, I got 30 some rods. And, and the, the, one of the best, in fact, most of the guys that use my trolling rods out there are uh, the guys that do our, our co anglers. Had it, most every one of the tournament guys had some of our rods in their, in their live well, and not in their live well, in their, in their lockers, I mean. Yeah, I think that people don't realize, like, doing doing what you did there's there's so many elements like you have to be a salesman but you also have to be a designer you know then you got to be able to catch fish there's just so many things that go into making a living fishing then you really i mean nowadays these kids got youtube and people to look back on but you didn't have many pioneers i mean you were the pioneer really well i was thinking about something you know and and making things better and and catching more fish you know, the spinner, the floating spinner that I designed out in Oregon, out there doing some shows out there and fishing the Columbia River. I fish, well, I fish a lot of water from Columbia all the way to New York and from from uh, Canada or uh, the 53rd parallel up there, Great Slave, Kawalis on the south shore of Great Slave all the way to Wallace down in uh, Louisiana, you might say, down in Texas. And, and I mean, I fished a lot of water. And learned a lot from some of the guys too. You know, some of the guys that, that were doing stuff, and and we did help design some stuff for the for the different areas. Is that's what was really important. Pittsburgh and uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, fish to Ohio, a lot of different inland lakes too. You know. I mean, I've sp- I've spent a lot of time in the, behind the wheel with you or in the boat with you, and you know, like I tell people, yeah. I didn't learn as much about fishing as I did about life and the business end of things, and I think that. You know, how did you learn yeah. the business end of fishing? Because there was nobody, you you well, were one of the pioneers of making a living fishing. You know, what we started with, as you know, we had a team, you know. And uh, you met some of the guys, you know, and I had a team of 15 people. This, nobody's ever done this before. Uh, when I worked for Lindy's, uh, the Berkeley would come up to me and say, hey, can you, uh, 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 Here's some new reels and rods and reels, and uh, so I go to a store and I says, you know, well, no, well, this is a this is a good rod, this is a good reel, and uh, and this is a good bait. So I said, you know, I said I'm I'm selling product for these people. Maybe I can get something for this, and this is how it started. This is I went to every sponsor. I know I went to Berkeley. I went to Ber- Berkeley Line. I went to the to. Uh, Rapala, people for Rapala, and then selling product for them. Well, I do my in stores and I do my seminars, see? Well, and then I got some people. I had like 14, 15 people that was on my staff that would go from Wisconsin and Dakotas and stuff like this. I had all these different people. I tied in with outdoor writers like Ron Shera. And uh, and people out 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 near area all all the way to New York, but I would do shows and they would do shows and and this is how I got to be a powerhouse for promotional stuff. So nobody's done it before. We had the biggest. We had like fifteen people in the Iowa. We had them in Dakotas, Wisconsin, Michigan, Mark Martin. That's how he got his start. With well, me. I was gonna say you you started yeah. like Mike Gofron, Steve Bissett, yep. Todd Frank. Mike, Mike was on there for a while. Todd Frank, yeah, a good fisherman, yeah, all Hall of Famers. Tommy Newstrom, all these guys, you know, started on our team, and they got you know, I made them work. I made them make calls. I made them copy down. Send the reports, and for Beverly, she ended up doing all that stuff. So she just got wore down, you know. We did that for many years, and this is how our manufacturer loved us because we account. We had we made them account for what they did, you know, and write it down, you know, and they just couldn't believe anything. TV and and oh, I mean, it just it just went on. I got booklets I could show you that just was. In fact, I just handed a booklet to. One of my nephew, my great nephew, and he wants to get into the fish. And I said, "Here you are. Here, here's the magic catalog right here. This is what you learn how to do." <clears throat> and outdoor writers, as you know, is a secret, and people in the TV and stuff are the secret to your success because they tell people what you know and what you do, and just what you're doing right now. So, 
e even before like the the Mr. Wally specialties, I mean, just deciding that you're going to make a living fishing because, again, nowadays people don't even think about it because it's there's so many there's Kevin Van Dams and the Denny Browers and people like that, but there just wasn't people doing it back then. So to make that jump, I mean, that had to be pretty scary. And I mean, did Beverly just smack you upside the head and say, what are you thinking? Or she had to be probably all into. We, we lived in a little old 10 by 50 trailer house, you know, you'd almost see through the walls in the wintertime. You could feel it through the walls. But, and uh, that's where we, she worked at the bank for, in Crosby bank for 20 years. Beverly took care of about everything. I'll tell you. But no, Beverly was, she put all this stuff together and I had, we had a guy named Bill Ricosi who did it before Beverly did it. He did it for me for a while and then he, he, he moved on and he went out west or somewhere and, and, uh, doing something on a campground or whatever. But that's how it started. And, and then, of course, then when Randy left and I just took on and, and I had all these people that would, that come back with me. They wanted to stay in the fishing part of it. Um, Jim Miscavige, remember Jim Miscavige? He was from Wisconsin. He was a good fisherman too. And him and I got second place in the in the least tournament. So I got into the tournaments then. I did pretty well. And uh, with the tournaments, and in fact, in Minnesota with a 315, and Marv kept putting me uh, signing me up for the bass tournament with the BCA Bass Casters. And they had a tournament in Minneapolis in Minnetonka. And I, and the smallmouth bass were worth more points in the lake because they were harder to fly and harder to catch than the largemouth. So everybody went for largemouth, so I went and looked for smallmouth. And I found a whole bunch of them. And they were in an area that you will laugh about this because you know how sailboats are tied up to a marker? Yep. Well, below that is on a chain going down to like a big wagon wheel. And and I seen this in another lake in Wisconsin where those bass were spawning in the spokes of that big old wagon wheel. And by gosh, here they were in the same situation on Lake Minnetonka, and I mean nice small malt. So a three pound small malt, if you caught and put it in in, in your line, well, a three pound small malt were worth like over a five pound large malt would. So I stuck with a small malt for two days, won the tournament, won a boat and, and and I bought uh, some some cash and and uh, and uh, it was like wow this is pretty neat. this is pretty easy work you know <laughs> so and I fished against all those guys all the bass guys in Minnesota and Linders and all those guys and Alan got second place and which I was and he wanted to win it so bad I felt it's kind of like bad that I that I actually won it honest to God the Sun Times paper was wrote it up and. So that was my first experience with a tournament. So I thought, wow, so I kind of like this. So yeah, as you know, then so how many years? Let me, get, uh, let me get this straight. Mr. Walleye, <laughs> that's what they, that is yeah. your literally legal name. Mr. Walleye well, you know, actually won you know a, how that got? Did you know how that got named? No, but you won a, you won a bass tournament before you won a walleye tournament? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Boy. See, I'm going to yeah, use that fished. against all my bass buddies. But go ahead. I want to. Yeah. How did you, Mr. Oh. Walleye? Go ahead. Well, anybody can catch bass. Walleye can <laughs> take a little smarter people. That hundred percent with you, Papa. <laughs> better not use that. You better not use that. Okay? Oh, I love it. Love <clears throat> but you know how the name Mr. Walleye came about? I'm about fixing I fished to. a tournament. I fished a tournament over there in 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 upper upper uh, what do you call it? upper Michigan there, uh, Beta Knock. Ron Linder was standing down in the, on the stairs going up, and Bob Kazkowski, remember Kaz? Kazkowski yep. was the uh, MWC director. way guy for a long time, too. Yeah, you probably knew him because he, he was around a long time. You know? So anyway, so I take a big bag of fish up up there and to weigh them, you know, and Bob looks down there, and he says, well, man, look at that. He says, here comes old Mr. Walleye. So Kaz actually named it. Ron Linder, when I walked down the stairs, you get that trademark before somebody steals it. You get that trademark. So it was actually Ron Linder that told me to do that. So I went to Minneapolis and got a trademark deal, and we trademarked that. And we also trademarked Beverly, Mrs. Walleye. How oh. about that? Did I, I, you know, that I did not know. Yeah, see, and Mrs. Walleye, she's got her own pink rods, and I have like 30 some rods that I designed. And plus the fish batter, you know, 
and a lot of lot of things, you know. So just got to keep busy. So I, I remember from my it's college, like, uh, you, you sent me a present for my college graduation, and it was like a twenty pound box, a commercial box of fish batter, and we literally. Oh yeah. This is true story. Jimmy Fafrich Jr. was one of the cooks, and we had a, we had a fish fry, and it was pouring down rain, and Jimmy Fafrich Jr. and my dad were out cooking fish in the pouring down rain. And uh, oh, we had wow. we had a giant bin of commercial like you sell to the restaurants uh, fish better that you sent me. You probably don't yeah. even remember that. Yeah, we're still selling lots of it. U.S. Foods and 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 uh, Cisco and all these other guys. They use it for their kitchen. They use it for uh, pork, 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 their pork shakes and stuff in the morning and for their breakfasts and stuff. Yeah, so we don't get into a lot of it like we did before, but but uh, we uh. We still sell it and still sell some rods, and ice rods, and stuff like that. So, so anybody looking for fishing rods, like that, we got some of the best trolling rods in in, in the world, and I'll tell you that. You know, it's it's not all roses, and I and you're. You're kind of an upbeat guy. When me and you talk privately, you know, there's some things we talk about because, I mean, it was a struggle to get to where you got. I mean, what was, what is the worst part of fishing for a living? I mean, when you look back at it, I know you're, you're obviously happy with your decision, but, you know, so people understand, especially some of these young guys nowadays, you know, what, what were the, the things you look back and you're still like, man, I didn't like that. Well, you know, uh, you know, we, we, had, we did not know everything. We learned from a lot of different people, you know. When they sent us down to do, the, to do the, the reps in the south, you know, I had to learn lakes that was never been on before, you might say. But I'd always kind of get some tips from some from the local guys, and then I'd use our methods that we always use to uh, to uh, you know make them better and 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 find the fish. You know, walleye magic was what we called it in those days. The walleye magic. You know, it was a book that Linder came out with afterwards. It was a walleye magic. And put it all together. As when we first started doing this, we all get together. Of course, over sometimes over have a few beers in the old days, you know. When, but we work hard and hardly hardly have a hamburger eat and no no money in our pocket at all. You know, I mean, I seen the time when we had to make a collection so we could buy lunch in, in the old days. So it was it was a it was a it was a, a, a lot of money making deal in those days. It, it was a learning experience that was unbelievable. But how, so, how long did it take you to really? get if you want to call it comfortable with making a living well i did it was, it, the sponsors is what really helped help me you know the, the berkeley the paul johnson and uh and uh craig weber ron weber from when i made the foxy jig remember that oh yeah and they did the advertising on that i did that for them too and then and then I got the crankbait for him, and then the Northland tackle. And Lady, when I left Lady, well, they kind of split up. Alan Ron, they kind of went out, went out and did their magazine and did their their commercials and stuff like that. And then after that, I kind of, after oh, a couple three years of doing this, and then I kind of went on my own, you might say, from Lindy's. And then and then that was bought out. Then I think Babe Winkleman bought out, and he was putting his name on some of the product that. That we uh that we had, had designed so so I kind of and uh, and I had a meeting one night with them and then they didn't show up for the meeting the second time so that's when I went to Northland I said hey Northland you still told me you still would like to have me and, and that's when I went to them so and after that it was like John Peterson and Dwayne Peterson are just the greatest people in the world and and now the people that are running right now Kyle Waterman if you know Kyle Kyle's you know, kind of my boss now. One yeah, of my he's, bosses he's a good, good, yeah, yeah, and he's a good youngster. Yeah, really good youngster. And he's full of energy, and uh, he's waiting to uh, this COVID stuff gets over with. So, so anyway, so that's that's what we do. And then maybe, and I'm I'm just kind of slacking back a little bit. I still do stuff. My son's coming up today. That I thought he was at the door there. She's coming up today to, to do some sun fishing on the ice. So I've been catching some really nice bluegills. So come on over. We'll take care of you. So of all the places you've traveled and done, what what is your favorite place to fish? doesn't even have to be Wallace. Wherever, wherever they're biting. Yeah. Wherever I, like, biting. I like them all. I, whatever they're biting. Yeah, that sounds like a true salesman. If, that's like no, a true I, salesman. I, I, I like uh, I like all. I mean, I like to jig fish them. I like to rig them and like a cast for them. You know, uh, 
you know, and I and I'll tell you one thing. And now, what's just fun? I do. I still do a little bit of guiding once in a while for special people, and then and I take people out that are handicapped and they don't know how to jig fish. They don't know how to do this. Uh, you know what I tie on them? A slip bobber. Probably uh-huh. the most deadliest fishing machine there ever was was a slip bobber. Yes, I can I'm... go out to the flats. And I can set that up at 25 feet, uh, and I can zigzag along that flats, you know, into the fish are down 30 feet. I can just drop her down. Or if the fish are up up a little higher, I always put about 18 inches off and put a nice leech on, and you'll catch big fish, lots of fish. Then I can go in where the bass and walleyes are in the spring of the year, you know, in 10-foot water on rocks that nobody can jig. And oh, nobody in their right mind. I, even me, I can get snagged up half the time. And I'll just tie on. I took uh, the guy from the Fishing Hall of Fame in Little Falls out, him and his partner. And they'll get this. He was like 92 or 93, and his partner was 95. And I'm 80, you know. You know, I'm pushing 82 or whatever it is. You know, those days, that, that, that was. And anyway, all those years, you know, and all that stuff that those guys could never do, and never catch a fish because they couldn't keep it on the bottom. Or, I mean, it was stuck to the bottom. And those guys had a ball, and they caught fish like you can't believe. And they caught smallmouth, they caught walleyes, and they caught walleyes, and smallmouth, big ones, little ones. You know, and they, this guy from the Hall of Fame in, in Minnesota, he said it's the best fishing. He's been in Canada. He said it's the best fishing. I ain't ever lost a hook, he said. Well, we have a oh, mutual so friend that uh, I think Ron Linder was the one that nicknamed him the Bobber Doctor, uh, Bruce Sampson. We yeah. done some stuff oh, with yeah. Bruce. Bruce, he's won a yeah. lot of money on a bobber. Oh, well, you better believe it. Joe Jerry Anderson actually taught him how to fish. You know. Yep. God, how do you remember yeah. all those names? Well, God. it's hard to. In order to get, you know, your, your memory starts sliding. You know, you can only remember half of the many. Wow, well, yeah. you're pretty. You're pretty good so, at it. <laughs> so no, I mean, no, but it, but it's 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 been a you know it's like right now you know I'm I'm waiting for my son to come up so we can go fishing you know and he never gets a chance to he he fish, works in a in a in a place where the, the skating rinks and all that stuff of basketball he's a maintenance guy for all that he's been there for a lot of years and he makes pretty good bucks and and all this COVID stuff you know so we've had our shots and. You know, Beverly and I both, so <clears throat> we're a little bit better shape. So, but no, it's just, I mean, I just, I just wait to go fishing. And I lost one of my good fishing guys last week, took over a bunch of sunfish. I said, Hey, Mike, I said, hey, could you use a few sunfish? I got a limit here. Oh, well, I'll never turn them down. Well, I went over there and I cleaned him in his garage, and <clears throat> he couldn't even get out to the garage because he was so out of wind and he's got head cancer. And then that night, eleven o'clock at night, he just he just gone. He was gone, and he had he had some of the biggest damn sunfish you could ever imagine. I mean, they were like eleven, twelve inches. I mean, huge, huge for a little pothole. Well, you so, you're still feisty. Yeah. I can remember back. You were probably in your early seventies, traveling with me, you and Todd, and uh, you were yelling at me and Todd for being candy asses and not moving fast enough and not getting up early enough and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would be. Remember how? Remember if he didn't get to bed by by nine o'clock at night, he was getting ornery. Remember that? <laughs> I, I'm um, not gonna go there. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, we stuff. always had fun because we went down to that little fish shop down there where they had a little 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 deal. You throw fish in at one end, they powdered it to come out the other end. To Jolly fry Rogers. Our fish. Yeah, well, that that was that was our good deal, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna yeah. have to come back one yeah. more time and fish Lake Erie, and I'll take you to the Jolly Rogers. I tell you what, I told Tom that I said, you know, we gotta do it. We should get together one time before we kick the bucket. I said, you know, I said it would be good to pick a nice day and when the fish are a plentiful along the shoreline. And I said, oh man, yeah. I, I'm even feeling generous enough. Fish. I think we can take Todd. <laughs> yeah. I think, well, we'll put him in the back seat, so he don't, we'll make him take, clean the fish, too. Okay? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I like how you're thinking. I, I will 
I will never forget. There are so I'm going to call them roachisms, but there are so many one-liners from you that we probably aren't going to get to hear today, and half of them we probably couldn't put on uh, on recording. But do you remember when I I was I signed with Ranger Boats? I mean, it's goddamn. It's been probably 20 years ago now too. But when Lund started making fiberglass boats, I I called you up and I was joking with you. You know, I said, hey, I said you're probably going to have to run a fiberglass boat too now. You know, and I was giving you some shit, and and you without hesitation said, oh no, that's too itchy. I get too itchy. <laughs> Way too itchy with the fiberglass. Yeah, we call them itchy boats, remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> my. We kid, all the kid, we all call them itchy boats. You know, fiberglass makes you itch, you know? Yeah, we only call them that. Remember that? I, I, I definitely do. I remember a lot of things, but you... Well, you know what, Todd was... You don't remember Todd Frank. He was so... When he, when he got... They actually put that step in that uh, the lawn there. We, we, we worked on that to get it to speed. And we were going by some of those itchy boats pretty fast, you know. And of course, Todd just loved to race, you know. So he that was his deal. He could he could run right by some of them guys, you know. And that guy, oh, those damn these damn tin boats are running by us. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with my boat? That yeah, is a fact. Todd would love that. Yeah, he loved that. So he liked to race. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. sincerely appreciate your time and. Uh... And for all that you've helped uh, me and everybody else in the fishing industry with, I don't think a lot of, like you said, people appreciate uh, sometimes they just take all this information for granted, but I certainly don't. And I'm hoping you you make some time to come down and go fishing here. I might just come invade that crappie lake across from your house because I know where your pole barn is and I know where your crappie lake is. Remember, everybody knows how to shoot too. This is about as good as me, so remember that. So. Oh, I know who the, I know who the brains of the operation. Cole Kyle, the Cole Kyle. You know, he said he wants to buy in my back room. He said, "I want to buy this room." He said, "I want to buy this room." Said, you got to get by Beverly first. <laughs> too funny. Well, I appreciate yeah, your time, okay. Papa, and I hope we can do her again. Well, thank you, thank you, buddy, and you take care and be stay, stay safe and go catch some fish and. I remember, uh, maybe someday, maybe someday, well, I'll get out there, but I don't know. But, but you can always come up here too. I got some lakes up here that I can catch fish. You can catch fish on too. You know, it's probably not as like, as good as Erie, but it's but it's pretty doggone good. You know. I want to go to that secret bad. crappie lake you got. I don't. Want, I I got enough walleyes. I don't need to mess with those. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got we got crappies. So yeah, we got crappies. You can go catch a hundred of them a day. Yeah, like nothing. Yeah. Well, Papa's the name, the fishing's the game. Yeah, it's just a ton of crappies up here. Yeah, there's some lakes that have got a pound and a half, you know. But I just like the action, you know. Get us, you get a 10 to 12 inch crappie, you know, and, and to me, the 10 inches are eat, eat better than the, than the big ones. You know, the big ones are too soft, I know. But you know, that, that's one thing videos. about. That's one thing about you and like guys like Al Linder and some of those guys have been doing it forever. The, if you catch one more fish than me, you're you're not happy because you want to catch two more. Like you are still, <laughs> you are still so competitive and so into catching. I mean, do you think after the just millions of fish and hours of fishing that it wouldn't be the way it is? But uh, you still got it. Well, it's just fun, you know. Just sometimes they make the your your guy in the boat squeal a little bit, you know. So wonder what he's doing wrong then sometimes they pay attention and they do what what we're doing so so a lot of people don't do that see well that's the only reason i do that just not to be bad about it but but just say hey you wonder why what i'm doing so and that's why i always say when i see people catching fish i said the first thing i say what, what are he's doing what's he doing how's he getting them so that's the first thing i say so you know, learn it you know and that's well in fact first time i fished with al linder in wisconsin and we're, I was in the boat, and he said, there's a fish crib here. He said, so he casts over here, and I cast the other side. He catches a fish. I don't get nothing. He casts out again, and boom, he gets another fish. I cast on this my side of the crib, and I don't get nothing. You know what was the, what was the deal was wrong? He was on the shaded side of the crib, and that's where the walleye was on the shaded side. So I learned that lesson really bad. So you pay attention. I'll I'll le- how about we close with this one? This is a story, and I'll let you finish it once I once I bring it in and when you remember. I don't remember the particulars, but I remember you were out fishing, and you know, actually even backing up, I can remember me and you fishing on Lake Erie, and we were so nasty, but you didn't want to say give up, and me and you were the only ones that went out, and everybody else in the PWT didn't even launch the boat. You remember that? And uh, we were out. Yeah. 
we were out by the islands and you said, no, you've got to give in first. And then you bribed me with buying me breakfast because I was probably only about 16, 17, 18 years old. And because uh, you didn't want to give in and <laughs> and we came in, it was just nasty. It was giant waves. But uh, the same story, you were fishing with somebody and you didn't want to quit. You wanted them to say uncle first and they started catching fish. Yeah. And um, then you started shaking over there and the guy said, oh, you're finally cold too. And uh, you said, no, he said, you're catching fish because you're quivering over there. You remember that one? I probably do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't give up. Yeah, you know that, yeah. You're feisty, <laughs> Papa, that's for sure. Well, again, I really appreciate your time. I hope we can do her again. I'm going to have to make some time to come yep. up your way. And uh, But me, you, and Todd, yeah. you know, some of those guys, we should get back together and do a little eerie fishing while we still can. Okay, buddy. You take care and I'll behave yourself. And stay out of trouble. Keep fishing, and, uh, and when you catch one of those big ones, just think about the other guys. Thanks, Papa. Okay, buddy. See ya. Bye. Bye.